Hi everyone and welcome back to SG Carmart Reviews. So, back in 2018, Lexus launched its brand new baby SUV, the UX, which actually slots under the NX in the brand's SUV lineup. Back then, it was offered with a 2-litre powertrain as well as a hybrid option. Now, a couple of years on, we have this. The all-new, all-electric Lexus UX 300e. I think that the UX as a model is a very good looking car. So you have that same sporty yet elegant design language that you'll find across many of the new Lexus models today. So you have crisp sharp lines across the body, we have these nice slim headlights and this big grille down the front. And looking at this car, you cannot really tell that it's an electric car, right? I mean, the only thing really giving it away is the fact that the badging is a little bit blue, there's like an electric word down the side of the body and then again the blue badge at the back but beyond that it just looks like a standard UX which honestly in my opinion is great right you've got a nice sporty look a low stance compact dimensions and overall it looks more like a hatchback than an SUV which to me that's a win now at the rear of the car we do have this light bar that runs across the width of the car that I think gives the UX quite a distinctive look and again you cannot really tell that's an electric car beyond this blue badge here now in terms of boot space we have a 314 litre boot. It's not super big, but I think it's good enough for most small families. In terms of space, I have the anti-trolley with me. It won't pass the anti-trolley length test. Unfortunately, we don't have the big luggage today. John is on staycation. But yeah, I think space-wise is adequate. The Lexus UX 300e is priced at $265,800. The electric motor produces 201 brake horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque. The two-stage transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 km per hour in 7.5 seconds. For more details on the Lexus UX 300e or any other car, head on to sgcarmart.com to help you make a smart choice on your next car. Here in the rear of the UX, two things stand out. One, it's not very spacious, but two, it's very comfortable. So in terms of space, again, this is a small car, so you cannot really expect there to be a ton of room, right? So as far as the room and headroom is concerned, you know, I'm 1.7 meters tall and I think it's adequate for me. You know, I don't feel overly cramped, but obviously if you're taller, bigger, you might feel a little bit cramped. But again, this is a small car, so what do you expect, right? However, I must say it's very comfortable here. So the leather of these seats is very, very nice. We have nice soft leather on the armrest and the carpets are fantastic. Now, if I slide onto the middle, again, this is a comfortable middle seat. You know, it's nice and plush. I like that the transmission tunnel isn't very high, so you could tuck your feet in. And I think this car can fit three people with a little bit of a squeeze, but it will fit three adults relatively comfortably. Now, as far as amenities are concerned, we have two USB ports here. We have high and low heated seats, which you don't need in Singapore. Obviously, aircon vents. Nice and cool icon, which is, you know, standard for Lexus. We also have isofix points, and I mean, it's a fairly simple cabin, but I, I must say the, the sort of feeling of luxury and comfort here is very, very nice. Now, if we move on to the front, here, I must say that overall build quality feels very high, and I think that's something to be expected from a Lexus, right? So if you look at things like the stitching, the way the buttons feel, you know, there's a tactile feel to it, even the way the indicator stocks sound, you know, it feels well put together. It feels like people have spent time building this nicely. And that really, really, I think, elevates the sense of luxury, you know. This is the one of the cheapest Lexuses you can buy. So I think it's not as lavish as some of your more expensive models, but it still feels every bit as well put together. And I think for its price point and for its positioning, you're still getting a premium overall experience, you know. And talking about premium, we have some nice equipment as well. We have a Mark and Levinson sound system. We have these really, really, really nice seats. I love these seats. Um, we have, again, materials-wise, plush leathers at some key touch points where your arms will, will be on. You know, yes, there are like plastics all around, but again, this is not a super expensive Lexus, right? Um, we also have a wireless charging pad. We have a heads-up display, which you can toggle on and off here. 
And yeah, you know, overall, I think it's a well-equipped cabin. Um, my main complaint with this is that infotainment system. So this one, if you look at it, honestly, it looks kind of dated because it is, you know, Lexus has been running this infotainment system for quite a while. However, the biggest challenge actually is the fact that unlike the updated IS, this one, you don't get a touch screen. So that means you are left to use this honestly dated and quite frustrating to use trackpad, mouse, touchpad thing. And I, I really don't like using this. So it's one of those where I would just set like my favorite radio station and just forget, or you can just connect your phone up with a cable and use whether it's Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So let's go through how the Lexus UX 300e drives on the road. This being an EV, quietness and refinement is key. And this UX doesn't disappoint. I'm going along on the highway now and it's really nice and quiet. The drive is also very smooth. You know, I think something nice about this car is the fact that it doesn't really feel like EV. So even if you use the pedal shifters and, and hit the and try to get the maximum regeneration, it doesn't actually regenerate a crazy amount. So you don't have that one pedal feel. It feels fairly normal, you know, like a typical IC car, which is kind of nice, right? It's, it's a very sort of easy to use car. You don't have to think about the fact that it's an electric car. You just drive, you know, brake when you need to, accelerate when you need to, etc. As far as performance is concerned, we have 300 newton meters of torque, of electric torque. So obviously, acceleration is, is sharp and smooth when you want it. I think it's, it's not super quick, but I think it's more than fast enough for most people. I mean, this one has a 0 to 100 timing of 7.5 seconds. And honestly, on the road, if you really put your foot down, it feels a lot quicker than 7.5 seconds. Um, as far as handling goes, I think it's, 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 very, it's pretty good. The steering is quite light and that makes it sort of easy to drive in low speed conditions. And on the road, I do like that this feels more like a hatchback than an SUV. It feels low to the ground, obviously that lower CG helps. But overall, I think because the, the footprint is so compact and the steering is nice and nice and light, it just feels like a small car, which, which it is. But I like that it doesn't feel like it's super high off the ground. So that's really nice. Um, as far as range goes, so this car, we have about 300 kilometers of real world range, 300 and a little bit if you, if you drive with a very disciplined right foot, which I think in Singapore is a pretty usable number that probably will get you through, what, four days, five days if, if you're conservative. The one kind of big limitation with this car is the fact that when it comes to charging, this car only has a standard Type 2 socket, not a CCS socket, which is what you find on most of your German or, or even your Teslas, right? So this one actually has a Chardemo port. So what a Chardemo port is, is basically Japan's version of a fast charging thing, right? However, that's not available in Singapore as far as Chardemo charging is concerned. So what that means is that if you own this car in Singapore, you're limited to the less quick AC charging. So if you do want to buy this car or if you do own this car, I do think that you would need a kind of regular access to, to normal charging. So whether it's at home, whether you stay in a landed property with a wall box or a condo, or you have a workplace that, you know, has electric charging lot. So somewhere that you can put this car for, you know, six hours, seven hours, whether it's through the working day or overnight. I think realistically, you would need that to be able to run this car just because of the fact that this one uses a charger more port. So, the Lexus UX Electric. Is it a will buy, won't buy, or go try? For me, this is a will buy, but it comes with a big caveat, and that is if you have access to a regular charging solution. So I think with this UX, what you get is a good looking, high quality car. And I think for all intents and purposes, from a functionality perspective, it does everything that you need an electric crossover to do, right? You know, it's it's quick enough, it's smooth to drive, it's got enough space, and you know, it's just all around a very practical and usable car. For 260 over 1000, yes, this is not a cheap car, but I do think that 
sitting here driving this car, you do feel like you are driving a $260,000 car. You know, it feels high quality. It feels luxurious in a way that you want your Lexus to be. So, so I think that's, that's something worth considering. Yeah, uh, with this car, charging is a limitation. So I think if you wanted to own an EV and use it, sort of like ICE car, you know, where you head to a fast charging location and plug your car in for 30 minutes and get 100k of juice, then yes, this car won't be able to do that. However, if you do have access to a regular charging station, whether it's at your home or at your workplace, then yes, I think this Lexus UX is an electric crossover worth having. All right, so that's our review of the Lexus UX Electric. What else do you want to see us review this year? Do let us know in the comment section below. Do also like and share this video and subscribe to our channel as well. And if you hit the notification bell, you can see more of our upcoming videos. We're also on TikTok, so check us out at SG Karma. And it's New Year 2022. Please take care of yourselves, don't get COVID, and I hope all your resolutions come true. Bye! Take care of yourselves. Bye. That's so weird. Slap, 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 Okay. <laughs>